So let's uh, start off with the most valuable real estate in America. This coming to us from the visualcapitalist.com. Real estate values uh, in the U.S. is not uh, dispersive evenly. It's contracted in the county's larger cities. These are the top 30 most valuable cities in their explanation on where they are. And number one, what a shocker, dude. New York, New York, no shock there. Number two, LA is not far behind. And number three, San Francisco holding strong. I'm not going to go through the whole list. You can look it up. But it's Chicago, Washington, Boston, Miami. I am going through it. Miami, Seattle, Dallas, Philadelphia, San Jose, San Diego, Houston, Atlanta, Riverside. Would you believe Riverside made the list, David? Um, well, what time and, period is that? Yeah, what time period is this is, from? This is an updated article. This is this was this article came out 16 hours ago. I don't know what time span they came up with. Yeah, because I I thought I saw something that New York fell out of the top 10 for the first time ever. And at the bottom of the list is Las Vegas for most valuable uh, real estate. Uh, let's see what they came up. valuable. That may be the. Uh, uh, well, let's do that. According to real estate ty tycoon Harold Samuel, do you know Harold Samuel? Do you play golf? I don't, okay. but he sounds like somebody I'd like to know. There are three things that matter when it comes to real estate value. Location, location, location. All right. That's uh, not an old proverb. I've heard that one. America's property is no exception to this rule, depending on the city. Uh, you guessed it, location. There are very uh, vast discrepancies in real estate value across the country. Urging the latest data from Lending Tree. They got it from Lending Tree, David. The graph ranked the 30 most valuable real estate cities in America. We'll also evaluate the top cities based on median value of homes and how COVID-19 impacted their market. So they're doing it real time, more or less. It still says New York. Uh, it's 2.838 in billions. Um, 2,838, and they say in billions. I, it's 283. It, that doesn't even make sense, but uh, there are numbers. New York has the highest real estate value in the country at 2.8 trillion. That's around the size of oh, UK. That's cumulative. Uh, they're that's looking cumulative. at all the assets. Yep. Um, in the in the New York City, that's that's how they figure that. And New LA is not far behind it at 2.3, with San Francisco ranking third at 1.3. This may not come as a surprise, considering the popularity of these areas. New York and Los Angeles have two of the highest city populations in the United States, and San Francisco is the most densely populated city in America after New York. Uh, yeah. uh, okay. Uh, I can see that they well, also just came up the with the most... value of of these markets. But I, uh, what I've been reading is both Los, um, both New York and San Francisco have been experiencing a big pullback in terms of prices. Why the rest of the market seems to be going up, and that has to do with people fleeing the city for the suburbs and more affordable yeah. housing. Now that they're not tethered to jobs, that would be in those markets. I completely agree with that. I was talking to someone recently about places I'd like to live. And I said, honestly, if I'm going to stay in the United States, it's starting to boil down to places like Las Vegas. At least I get the uh, tax break. I understand the Florida thing. I just can't bring myself to live in Florida. It's just, well, I think God, having I been born God, and raised there, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's there are a lot of benefits for you know for living there just to, you can find everything that you're looking for um and you know except snow you except know, in snow. florida so except. you know it's got its pros and cons there's a time of year where it's better than others but i can tell you having um, i still have family in florida so the thought of perhaps living there again one day in the zero percent tax state uh, crosses our mind it's not something that I'm enthusiastic about at this point. No, I completely agree with you. Uh, but I've also been there when it rains, David, and um, the sky opens up and drops water on that place. Um, <laughs> well, I, I've you, never you seen rain San like Diego, that. The, the least amount of rainfall a year probably in the country. It, well, you, admittedly, I, you know, I posted this yesterday on my social media that uh, I feel bad for the rest of the country. <laughs> that's going through snow and cold and storms or whatever they're going through. And um, I'm out in, 
uh, it was like 69 with a slight breeze coming across Coronado the other day. Uh, it's really hard to leave here if the prices weren't so ridiculous. I mean, just now that I'm down here in San Diego proper, it, it's really ridiculous to live in San Diego. I don't know how people do it. I really, I don't know what the jobs are. We've talked about this a million times. What is the job structure? One of the possible stories we were going to talk about today was that the median price went up again on California. No surprise there. How do people support these properties, David? I mean, like, where is the job market? That's what I'm kind of fascinated with. I don't know how people are doing it. I, When I was looking in this area, the things that people were asking for were egregious. I mean, simply egregious. Um, you spend more day-to-day -day as, a, as a broker talking to people when they're buying. So I'm, I'm intrigued by this completely. How are people affording this stuff? I, California real estate is is reaching the point of breaking limits of dumb pricing. Well, I mean, for a long time, there's been an affordability issue. And for a long time, there's been an inventory shortage issue. And um, yet prices still keep going up. So when I first came to California, you know, I had, you know, I moved from Orlando, Florida area. And. 1999 okay and you know i moved out of a really fancy two hundred thousand dollar house in florida um and and the first house that i bought um first of all the little one bedroom apartment that i rented during my transition um out here was I think the rent was like 2200 a month, which was way more than my mortgage was for my big fancy house with a pool and, you know, right. in Florida. And, um, and I remember going to buy my first house. And I think the first thing I bought out here was a, was a townhouse. And I don't remember what we paid for, but it was 350 or $400,000. Now this was back in 2000. And it was uh, quite a um, quite a shock um, to me to be able to do that. And so the way that, and even though I had a great paying job, but I remember the my boss at the time when he he and I were talking, and I was whining about affordability way back then. Okay, he said he said something that was pretty profound. If you've got a good job it's completely affordable to live in California. And that's proven by millions of people, you know, every single day. So if you've got a great idea or a good job, California is absolutely positively the way to go in spite of the taxes, in spite of the regulatory environment, in, in spite of the, you know, the challenges with, you know, with housing prices. And when you, um, and I've always thought about you know, I've always thought about that um, ever since then. And I wasn't in real estate then. I was in the software business in the automotive industry um, back then when they brought me out here to do that. And so when now I apply that to what we're doing now, first of all, the number of 1 million plus homes is going higher. The number of transactions is going up. It's not going down. Those million dollar plus properties seem to be selling better than the, the lower end stuff. Um, interest rates also are the lower interest rates are making those houses more affordable than they used to be. They they used to be, um, and there's less competition in those in that over million dollar price range. Um, we can look at the millennials, which is which are now the largest um, group of of home buyers, not home sellers yet, but home buyers are the millennial, and there's a new wave of people who are looking to make the leap into home ownership, especially those that are in, um, in jobs that require them to be in a corporate office um, until now that were um, in a big city. So it doesn't really make sense for them to live in those dense spaces. So there's a lot more competition. But the reality is, is that, you know, the people who really struggle with affordability that you know that that have under a hundred thousand dollar a year household incomes um those people um are they're getting help from they're getting help from their families and they're and we're seeing multiple families buying houses together now 
today I live in a in a house that's valued over a, a million dollars from my humble beginnings of whatever it was three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, you know, way back in the you know in the day. And the way that we did it, or the way that I did it, and my wife did it simultaneously. And when we bought this house, you know, together, we were able to fortunate enough to pull our resources in order to do it with very little mortgage. But the but the I we were we we're the classic move up buyer, and so right. you know that's really what you're seeing a lot a, a lot of. There's plenty of move up buyers that are harvesting their equity and leveraging in that to move up into these more expensive price ranges and keeping their mortgages in an affordable range. Um, then there's a lot of inherited wealth of people that you know are um, are passing that down. But a lot of people are house rich and with re reasonable cash flow and the market is basically giving them a boost up um into these higher higher home prices so um you know it's 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 still as tough i mean i worry about you know these youngsters coming and trying to buy a house but somehow they're figuring it out and we're seeing a lot of parents helping kids today too that we didn't usually see so those would be some of the ways that they're doing it